So here I just want to show you how we provide cooling water to the engines and dynamometers. Not all of them, obviously, but we do provide water from the system to our two big engines, our Chevy V8 and our Cummins inline six diesel engine. So rather than just use you know, municipal water to remove the heat from the engines and dynos and then just dump it down the drain, we have a, a looped cooling water system here um, that uses this small cooling tower behind us to dissipate the heat. So basically what happens is that as the engines, uh, you know, give their heat off to the cooling water system, or as the dynos, you know, give off their heat to the cooling water system, um, the water comes back over into the cooling tower here, um, and it actually comes in through this pipe right here. Um, it goes in, and then there's a pipe that comes right up through the middle, and then it goes to a water distribution system on the top. Um, if you look um, right inside here, um, I'll, I'll demonstrate this operating here in just a minute, um, but you'll see the bars in there. Uh, those are perforated pipes, and the water comes up through the center, it then fills these pipes, and as it circulates, it then drops down through that green packing material, which of course increases the surface area and gives us a good amount of cooling um, that we need for these particular engines. Now, once the water has cooled, it just collects in the reservoir down here at the bottom. It comes out through this pipe, um, through the centrifugal pump, up, and eventually it comes over and ends up ultimately on the wall over there below the windows which is where the engines are. So you can kind of see the pipe that's up above and it comes down. And then as you look at this wall here, and I'll just show it in this one location because it's more visible, um, we've actually got two pipes here. So the inlet water comes into the top pipe, which is really a distribution header. Um, the water gets drawn off to the engines and dynos picks up its heat, and then the heated water comes into the bottom pipe over here and continues along in this direction. Um, there's actually a small booster pump along that line. Uh, the water on the bottom pipe goes to the booster pump, and then it comes up and over and right back into the inlet of the cooling tower as we talked about previously. So what I would like to do just very briefly is just show you how the system works. It's really quite simple. All we really need to do is turn on the electricity to the pump and to the fan, which provides airflow in the cooling tower, and the electricity to the booster pump. So um, there's just some switches here. Um, uh, this switch right here is going to turn on the pump. Oops, wrong way. I take that back. This turns on the fan, this turns on the pump, and then over there along the wall, our lab technician is ready to go, and he's turned on the electricity to the booster pump. And now hopefully we have water flow. In fact, you can see the bar is now rotating within the cooling tower. Um, the water is clearly moving. Um, I might note that those small holes on the bottom of the rotating bar are not moving straight down, they're actually at a slight angle. So as the water pushes out, <laughs> it pushes sideways against the bars to a certain degree, and then that puts the bars into rotation. And that distributes the water pretty uniformly throughout the cooling tower. And of course it drips down and under airflow, it cools the water down and nice cool water then goes back into the engine.